Okay, let's look at the constant volume case in more detail. In this case, work is equal to zero as the volume is not changing. So the change in internal energy is just equal to the heat added. And Q we've defined as NCV delta T. This was how we defined the molar specific heat at constant volume. And so the change in internal energy is just NCV delta T. Now we can rearrange this to write CV is equal to 1 over N times the change in internal energy over the change in temperature. So that's just the same statement. Now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in for the change in internal energy. We know for a monotonic gas that the change in internal energy is given by 3 over 2 NKB delta T. Or if we have the number of moles, it's 3 over 2 NR delta T. So now we're just going to substitute this expression into here. And we end up with CV is equal to 1 over N, 3 over 2 NR. The Ns will cancel, giving us 3 over 2 R. But R is just a number. It's 8.314. So we can substitute that in and solve. And we get that CV is equal to 12.47 joules per mole per Kelvin. Now we can actually check this against experimental data because it's possible to measure how much energy we need to put into a gas to raise its temperature. So for helium we've got 12.5 which is the same as 12.47 within the significant figures. Argon also 12.5. Neon is a bit off 12.7 and then Krypton's 12.3. As the masses of these monotonic atoms gets larger, our approximations from the kinetic theory actually break down a bit because we've got a bigger electron cloud around those atoms and we made the assumption that there's no, the only forces involved are from the elastic collisions of the particles off each other. As the electron cloud gets bigger, there's other forces involved as well, other electrostatic forces, which we're not taking into account in our model. So that's why the numbers are more off for the heavier atoms. So at constant volume, we've got CV is equal to 1 on N times the change in internal energy over the change in temperature. So for a, the general case of a gas, instead of having the 3, we have the F, the number of degrees of freedom. So just substituting this into here, and remember this is just a delta T, so these will cancel, we end up with CV is equal to 1 half FR. So this equation is provided for you on the formula sheet. Okay, now this is an interesting graph. It shows us for hydrogen gas, H2, how the CV varies as the temperature varies. So you can see at low temperatures, below around about 100 kelvins, the CV is equal to 3 on 2R. That's due to the 3 degrees of freedom. Between around about 100 kelvins and around about 1000 kelvins, we end up with the CV is equal to 5 over 2R. And then as we increase the temperature above that, we end up with the 7 over 2R. So this has been measured experimentally, and that's evidence of what we were saying last lecture with the theorem of equipartition of energy, how for low temperatures, for a diatomic, we've only got the three translational, then at mid-range temperatures, we have an additional two rotational, and then at higher temperatures, we have an additional two vibrational modes of freedom. So now let's look at the constant pressure case. So this is the case where we're going from I to F dash, which is a bit more complicated because we now have work done as well as the heat flow. So the change in internal energy is equal to NCP delta T. This is our expression for Q. It's how we define the molar specific heat at constant pressure. And the work done is equal to negative, because this is an expansion, P times the change in volume. And now just from our ideal gas law, in this case, the only things which are changing are the volume and the temperature, as we're keeping the pressure constant. So we've got that our change P delta V is equal to NR delta T, the change in temperature. So we can just substitute this into this formula here. And so we have the change in internal energy is equal to NCP delta T minus NR delta T. And now 
remember that we said that the change in internal energy didn't matter which path we took. So this change in internal energy is the same as the internal energy change in internal energy when going from I to F or the constant volume case. So this is equal to NCV delta T. So now what we can do is solve these two equations simultaneously as they're both equal to the change in internal energy. And so we have NCV delta T is equal to NCP delta T minus NR delta T. All our Ns and our delta Ts will cancel off giving us CP minus CV is equal to R, or CV is equal to CP minus R. So for a monotonic gas, this turns out to be CP is equal to 5 over 2R, because remember CV was 3 over 2R. And so solving that, we get CP is equal to 20.785. We can check this against the experimental data. And we get 20.8 for helium, argon, neon, and krypton, which is all in agreement with that 20.785. If you want to practice using these formulas, you should try homework set 4 for Phys 1131, question 10. Okay, so I'm going to introduce this now. You'll be meeting gamma again later. But gamma is just the ratio of the specific heats. So it's Cp on Cv. So for a monotonic gas, if you were asked to find gamma, you just substitute in Cp, which is 5 on 2R, Cv, which is 3 on 2R, so you end up with 5 on 3, which is 1.67. You'll be meeting gamma when we learn about adiabatic processes.